Hi everybody, welcome back and hope you're all well. So today I've got a little video for you on a mod I've done to my new case. I've basically added a 5 inch touchscreen sensor panel into my new Lee & Lee Lancool 2 mesh case. And uh, what I'll do is I'll run through how I installed this and uh, a little quick demonstration of the Ada 64 software at the end. Let's get into it. So this is a little LCD screen that I bought from Amazon, it's by a company called Elcro. This is a 5 inch screen and the resolution is 800 by 480 I think I paid just short of £50 for this. read a few reviews on Amazon and uh, this is this is the one I chose to go with. Um, as I say, it's touch screen. On the back, we've got an HDMI socket and we've got two USB sockets. One of them uh, is you, you would use if you wanted the actual function of the US uh, the, the touch screen the other one would just power the screen up as normal then we've got an audio output here and then here is all the function buttons for controlling the screen as well such as uh, brightness and things like that and contrast all the different different stuff you normally get in any standard LCD screen so what I'll do is I'll leave the link for this uh, down at the bottom if any of you are interested in buying this what I also did was I printed a border, also created a little border uh, which you can see here using my son's 3D printer, he's got one of these DaVinci Junior 2.0 3D printers I think it is, he's had it for years, um, not really printed much stuff off but I have got this little cool uh, Terminator head which he printed off for me years ago, not the best detail but I quite like it. Anyway, um, all the models, including things like this, can be found on a, a website or an app called Thingiverse. Um, there's a guy called Aaron Valance who had put this actual border on only a couple of weeks ago, and he's actually used it in the exact same case as myself. So thanks to him for, for sharing that with everybody, and uh, I'll also leave a link to that down, down below too if anybody fancies printing their own one off. As you can see, it's green. That was the colour of the filament that came in the printer. And it's basically just the last of the roll, so I might as well use it. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll spray paint this white to, to match the case. Also got a little pile of nuts and bolts. As everyone has, they've usually got a big box full of bits and bobs. And I managed to find these and I'll use these to, to bolt the, the screen into the case. As you can see, I've already cut the hole out the side of my case, which was one of the, the most scariest things I've had to do for a long time. Just as it's a brand new case, I got it last week, and it's the Lee & Lee Lancool 2 Mesh, which is a fantastic case, especially for the airflow, a little bit bigger than what I had before as well, so there's a bit more room inside. Um, so basically, to make things easier, what i done was I took the actual side panel off, which is held on before screws. You can find those here on the hinges. And then I took this to a table, and then what I did was I offered the, the screen up to the panel, and just use a pencil to mark the, the outer edges. The only thing that I would say is just make sure that you, you position this correctly so that when the lid closes over, uh, the panel closes over, the screen actually sits inside this bit here, if that makes sense. Um, if you make it too high, it'll hit the top, or if you make it too low, it'll hit the bottom, and then the, the, panel won't, the bottom panel won't close properly, so just be careful when you're doing that. And then... After I'd, uh, I'd cut out the holes, I then offered the, the little border that I'd made up to the other side and just marked out the holes on that and drilled those through. So I'm just about to uh, spray paint the border now and I'm actually going to uh, spray paint the the little bolts as well, just so that the, the tops of the bolts are all white to and just place this in a bit of cardboard just to protect the surface that I'm going to place this on. And uh, the paint that I'm using is a plastic primer, uh, just a white matte finish, which is all I need. Again, I got this from Homebase, I think it cost me about £10. And, uh, I'll crack on with that and let's see how it goes. That's the border all painted now. 
not a bad finish. Not quite the, the white that I was looking for, so what I might need to do is buy metallic white paint or I'll buy white filament for the 3D printer and give it another go. Uh, as you can see on the back side it's still that horrible green, but uh, I'll get that in the case, let's see how it looks. That's us got the screen now in the case. As you can see, looks much much better with that white border. Just to show you how this is all plugged in, so the border sits in the front of the bottle panel and then we bolted through it and attached the screen using the nuts and bolts that I showed you earlier on the four of them. So we've got a USB cable which I bought from Amazon again and that actually goes up to the inside of my case just at the bottom of the case there and ties in with one of the USB headers don't know if you can see that, there's a bit of a reflection on the screen, it's quite hard to see um, I'll see if I can open the top. Yeah, so at the bottom there, you can see the USB header that uh, the cable from the screen plugs into, and then the other screen, the other side of the other cable, which is the HDMI cable. Again, I bought that from uh, Amazon. That's a short HDMI to DisplayPort cable. I've got that routed through the case at the bottom. It goes over the top of the power supply unit. It comes up at the bottom of the corner of the cases. You might just be able to see it at the bottom PCI slot. Um, I basically took the PCI slot out, fed the cable through, and then I could actually put the PCI slot back in. There's a little gap at the bottom corner, and it doesn't it doesn't nip on the cable or anything like that. So the cable is well hidden, can't see it. That basically comes out the back of the case and loops up and goes into my graphics card. Uh, the graphics card I've actually got is the uh, RTX 2070 Super. Um, and that has, I believe, three display ports and one HDMI port, so I just use one of the existing HDMI ports, but yeah, please so far, um, and what I'll do now is I'll, I'll quickly run through the software that you see on the screen here, and just make sure none of these cables get caught. Uh, yeah, so the software you're seeing on the screen is Ada64 Extreme, and I'll, uh, I'll quickly run you through that. Just before I go into the Ada64 software itself, I just thought I would show you what I have set up on my display settings. So as you can see here, I've got a little third screen, which is the the 5-inch display that's currently in my case. I've positioned this just to the bottom right-hand side of my main monitor. The reason being, the screen in the case and my PC is right, uh, basically to the right of uh, my screen here. When you finish doing all the... Uh, the tweaking that you need to do is just a case of dragging it down into the right hand side and it'll pop over into your screen that you have in your case. Your case may be in a different position. You might have it to the left hand side of your monitor above wherever wall mounted or you might actually have an external screen that you want to use rather than being inside the case. But I thought I'd just show you this anyway as it's, it's, it's a lot easier to drag the, the sensor panel onto your screen. Okay, the next thing we need to do is go to ada64.com and then go to the downloads page you'll see here there's ada64 extreme in the .exe file or a zip file it is free to download but just to let you guys know there's, there's limitations on the software if you just go for the free version for me uh, I wanted the, the GPU temperature to, to show and it's not actually available on the free version of it you need to buy it um, I'm not quite sure what else is, is limited on it but everything else, when I was playing about with it, everything else seemed to work fine apart from the GPU temperature. But I thought, guys, uh, I would just give you a heads up, just in case you, you went ahead and downloaded this and you were, you were wondering why things weren't working properly. So, yeah, I, I basically paid for the software. Um, I think I was just below £40 for it, and for you guys in the States, it's just uh, below $40 as well. Another thing I should also let you know as well, that if you plan to show your FPS at all, um, your frames for your gaming, you will need to have RevaTuner statistics server running in the background. Um, it's the only way that you'll get the FPS to show, and uh, I'll, I'll take you through this when we're actually looking at the software itself. So, yeah, go ahead and download this. And as once you've got downloaded, you should be greeted by a screen like this. What you then need to do is go to File, Preferences, and then on the left hand side here you'll see sensor panel, 
Now when you first install this, the top tick box which says show sensor panel will be unticked. When you do tick it, you'll get a black screen turning up in the, somewhere on your desktop. For me, mine's is all populated obviously because I've got everything done, but for you guys it'll just come in black. Other things that I've also got ticked is to prevent the screen from being minimised. As once I've got it in the the little LCD panel, I don't want it going anywhere, so I'll make sure I've got that ticked. And also the lock panel size, just so that I don't grab the top corners and, and reduce the size of it by accident. But, yeah, you guys might want to change some of these things to suit yourself, but I thought I'd just show you the settings I've, I've got. The other thing as well is the size of the panel. Earlier in the video I mentioned that the screen is 800 by 480 so I put these sizes in here as well to make sure it fits the screen exactly. So as I said before, um, this will appear totally black for you guys. All you need to then do is right click on it and go to Sensor Panel Manager. You'll, another window will pop up and you will have nothing in here at all. This is everything that I've added but you guys will be totally blank. What you can then do is, to start things off, you can start off uh, by clicking new and another screen will pop up for you. Now you've got item type up here at the top corner. So you've got all your sensor items and then static labels. So static labels are just text items basically. You've got images. For me, uh, the background is an image for me and uh, the logo is an image. And then you've got your graphs such as your CPU and GPU temperature graphs. Hey, sorry. Graph is your FPS graph down here, gauge is your CPU temperature and your GPU temperature gauges here. You'll notice that there's a, an X and a Y zero zero coordinate, so anything that you put in will always start at the top left hand corner of your screen. For instance, if I just show you here, I can put in time and hit OK, and you'll see you can barely make out the words time there, but the actual time itself here. And you've got these little move arrows here which allows you to fine tune where you, you want these things to be positioned. Just make sure you've got it selected here. You can move it a pixel at a time, five pixels at a time, or ten pixels, or even twenty pixels if you want, just to do all the fine tuning. What you can also do is right click it on the screen itself and click move and then it's it's a free move thing. You can click up wherever you uh, place it wherever you want, but if you just want everything to be exact and fine tuned, yeah, you've got this option here. So I'll just remove that just now because I don't need that. So yeah, back to the screen if you're adding things. As you can see down here as well, anything that you click is fully customizable. You can change the width of all the sensor items, how, how long they are, the text, the font, the text size, the colour of the text, everything you want, is it's really really fully functional which is great about it. All the sensor items as well, you can change the minimum and maximum values as well depending on the, the hardware you've got on your PC. So yeah, plenty, plenty of stuff to, to add in here. Um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you what I've got in mind. So, the first thing I set was my desktop. Uh, if, if I can remember right, if you don't have that set to the top, it means that anything that you put on the screen could potentially end up behind the desktop, if that makes sense. So I made sure that the, the desktop was the first item, then I started adding things which basically pop up on top of it. So the GPU and CPU gauges, you can see here's a temperature of this GPU and the CPU. And then we've got sensor items such as VRAM and the GPU usage, CPU usage and so on, which is all these, these items here. As I mentioned earlier on, um, you will need Riva Tuner statistics server running. So I have a graph for that, for when I'm running any full screen games, you'll, you'll see the, the FPS popping up. And I've also got an FPS counter set up here as well. So a couple of other uh, the sensor things, such as the CPU cooling fan. In my case, it's actually my pump fan, uh, as I've, I've got a, an all-in-one cooler in my PC. Memory used, um, as I said as well, I've got 32 gig of memory in mine, so you can set that in the, the values when you're actually adding this sensor. And then the text items, so I've just got mem as some text, RPM and pump is just some text items are positioned. And then the graphics card and the CPU that I'm using is just text items, and I, I place these down in the bottom corner here as well. 
and then uh, the small 2 PNG is actually my gaming logo which I've got here and the time was uh, what, I guys, uh, what I showed you guys earlier on if you're adding anything in you so I'll just delete that as I don't need it and as long as you've got everything in place and how you guys like it you can actually then click export and save it to your computer somewhere and then you can actually do a completely different one if you want some of you might be running different themes that you like to swap between and you, you might want completely different gauges, different backgrounds, different things showing so there's limit, limitless options of what you want to show and how many of these you can have saved and you can just uh, import it every time you want to use one of the different panels that you've saved before so yeah, fully customizable. I think it's a, it's a great addition for 50 quid it's such a good thing to have in my case and that's it guys, as uh, once as you close that out you'll be able to position a screen where you want so as I said earlier on, means just down the bottom right hand side beside my main monitor, I just drag that down and it locks into the screen and that's it hope you guys liked this, uh, if you did please leave a like and uh, subscribe if you can um, also uh, leave any comments if you, if you think this video is good or even any negative comments as well they'll help as well towards the next videos that I make and that's it guys another video done for you I'll see you soon cheers